going a little high. Power, 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 power. Without so much as a warning, life hangs in the balance. Human endeavor turns to chaos. And within seconds, nothing will ever be the same. Ever. Get ready for 30 minutes of some of the most jaw-dropping moments of destruction ever captured on tape. An inferno at a metal recycling plant subjects firefighters to a barrage of devastating blasts. And in Finland, it's chaos on the track when a speeding race car cartwheels into a crowd of spectators. Hold on to your seat because things are about to get destroyed in seconds. Walton Hills, Ohio. A fire breaks out in a metal recycling plant. The building is filled with metals such as titanium steel and highly combustible magnesium. Pouring water on a magnesium fire can result in an explosion. But fearing the fire might spread to a nearby gas station, firefighters decide to hit the building with their water cannons. Wow, what was that? The massive explosion sends shards of white hot magnesium raining in all directions. Firefighters immediately back out of the danger zone. The massive fireball shoots over 150 feet into the air. The firemen continue to douse the building, triggering even more magnesium explosions. The most effective way to fight a magnesium fire is to smother it with sand. But the firefighters didn't bring enough to control the inferno. When water comes in contact with burning magnesium, it breaks down into hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is highly combustible, and oxygen acts as fuel for the existing flame. Once ignited, magnesium burns at 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, causing the walls of the building to melt under the intense heat. The fire continues to burn into the night. An investigation determines that the fire is the result of titanium shavings being contaminated with steel. When these two metals are compressed, the intense friction sometimes creates sparks. One of those sparks caused a small fire, which quickly spread to several barrels containing highly combustible magnesium. Everyone inside the building makes it out safely, and no one is injured. Race fans gather at the Famoso Raceway in Bakersfield, California, for the 2009 National Hot Rod Association March Meet. up to the starting line in his nostalgia funny car red dragon is Tom Padilla. This is Padilla's first professional nostalgia funny car race. After a few minor adjustments from his crew chief, Padilla is ready to go in his 3,000 horsepower machine. takes off 
and within seconds hits 235 miles per hour. Just as he crosses the finish line, the supercharger in his engine explodes, which blows off the car's first panel. Designed to relieve pressure in case the supercharger blows, the flying burst panel breaks the latch holding the fiberglass body onto the chassis. The 400-pound body launches an incredible 300 feet in the air, then slams onto the ground. Padilla has no idea why the supercharger blew. He writes it off to the intense stresses a dragster undergoes during a race. Due to the car's many safety features, Padilla escapes completely unscathed. Although Red Dragon's body is crushed and its engine damaged, it's salvageable. Padilla and his crew chief estimate it will cost $25,000 to rebuild the car. Whether it's warming up the crowd or attempting a stunt of his own, James Bubba Chiasen is an integral part of the Krusty Demon's freestyle team, although his tricks are often performed for laughs. Today in Melbourne, Australia, Bubba plans to jump a distance of 100 feet in front of 30,000 spectators. Put your hands together for Bubba! It's the furthest official distance Bubba has ever tried to clear. It's been raining most of the day. The track is wet, making conditions less than ideal for the stunt. So wait for the Melbourne But Bubba decides to attempt the jump anyway. He starts down the track and gains speed. He approaches the 20-foot ramp. At the last second, Bubba decides to abort the attempt. On his approach, Bubba knows he's going too fast and would overshoot the landing ramp. He's now ready to give it another try. Right. But once again, he's approaching the ramp way too fast. For a safe landing, Bubba should hit the ramp at roughly 45 miles per hour, but he's going 62 miles per hour. Bubba overshoots the landing by nearly 55 feet. Bubba's hurt, but he gets up and is taken to the hospital for treatment. Two days later, Bubba talks about his injury. A little battered up, uh, broken sternum, three broken ribs, two of them twice, <laughs> broken hand, cracked hand, I guess, and my back. But that's cool, it's just normal, so I'm good. Bubba blames the rain for the mishap. Because of water on his goggles and his speedometer, Bubba can't see his speed. He tries to feel it out, but he overcompensates, causing the crash. <laughs> Bubba makes a full recovery and still rides with the Krusty Demons today. Breaking news out of Southeast Houston, a chase right now. A news helicopter in Houston, Texas, follows a suspect wanted on felony drug charges. The car is, is swerving now onto the shoulder. It is uh, moving at a pretty fast rate of speed. As he barrels down the interstate, passing every car in his way, the police finally catch up to him. Uh, you can see the Houston Police Department car coming up right behind him. He exits the freeway and enters a neighborhood, just as another news copter joins the chase. This is not so far from the downtown area. He tears through residential streets, runs stop signs, and takes high-speed turns. Even with this particular camera zooming in as it is, you can still tell the car is moving at a very fast rate of speed. 30 minutes into the chase, the suspect blows past an intersection and loses control. Oh, 
take off the other end of the wall. As the driver hits several dips in the road, the car bounces. Then barrel rolls across three residential lawns before stopping up against the house. Seconds later, police surround the vehicle. The driver makes his way out of the wreckage and is apprehended. He faces additional felony charges for evading arrest and illegal possession of a firearm. The house is only slightly damaged and no one inside is injured. Despite this high-speed crash, the suspect suffers only a broken wrist and minor cuts and bruises. rally in Finland is one of the fastest rally car races in the world. Every year, 500,000 spectators line the track to watch the action up close and personal. One of the race's most notable stages is known throughout the sport as Onen Poya. Infamous for its sweeping corners, blind crests, and big jumps, Onan Poya has been the site of numerous accidents and a few fatalities. Even though the Onan Poya has been modified over the years, it's still the most dangerous leg of the race for drivers and spectators alike. Every year, 500,000 spectators line the track of the Thousand Lakes Rally in central Finland to watch one of rally cars' most challenging circuits. Adding excitement to the race is the Onan Poya State. This leg of the track is notorious for being one of the most dangerous in rally car racing. Spectators flock to the area hoping to witness some spectacular crashes. Unaware that they're not only going to see one, they're about to be part of one. Racers Julian Roderick and David Allen catch a little air coming over a hill and land on a small bump. This causes the driver to lose control and veer off the side of the road. The car then hits another bump and cartwheels into the crowd. As the car tumbles end over end, spectators scramble for safety. After flipping over five times, the drivers are rattled, but not seriously injured. Amazingly, no spectators are hurt in this crash. But the rally car's governing body removes the Onan Poya stage from the race over safety concerns. December 4th, 1996. The USS Abraham Lincoln is on duty in the Eastern Pacific Ocean. As night falls, an F-A-18 Hornet pilot is returning to the ship. Large swells are causing the carrier to pitch, adding to the challenge of the night landing. Pitching increases the danger of a ramp strike a situation where an incoming aircraft hits the rear of the carrier below the flight deck. As the Abraham Lincoln bobs on rough seas, the pilot is on approach. The deck's moving a little here, right? Glide slow. Going a little high. Power, 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 power. power. As 
as the pilot maneuvers his F-18 toward the flight deck. He approaches at the proper angle and speed. 203 on glide path, slightly right of course holding. But just as he's about to touch down, the carrier pitches up on a swell. The pilot is unable to clear the ship. The back end of the jet strikes the deck. Jet fuel explode as the plane skids across the flight deck and falls off the edge of the carrier. The pilot ejects after the crash and is later recovered from the water. Despite suffering severe injuries, he makes a full recovery. The $57 million fighter jet is never recovered. Oh. It's the World Street Nationals in Orlando, Florida. Some of the fastest street cars on the planet are here to compete in the quarter mile. Eddie Timmel has brought his 2,500 horsepower Pontiac GTO from Canada to this annual event. He's confident his car has enough muscle to race the quarter mile in under six seconds. Line. Orlando, Florida. Racers from around the globe are here to compete in the World Street Nationals. Because there's no limit to the amount of power allowed under the hood of these street cars, racer Eddie Timmel has installed a 2,500 horsepower engine in his 1974 Pontiac GTO. The young Canadian has poured his life savings into this $150,000 car. Soon after the start, the GTO veers into a steel guardrail and is launched into the air dangerously close to spectators. The driver's door and roof are torn away, exposing Eddie inside. He slams down head first, while the car flips four times, traveling nearly 200 feet. The car that Eddie bought at age 15 is demolished. It's later determined that the modified engine was too powerful for the 10 and a half inch tires to handle. There simply wasn't enough traction to keep the car moving straight. It's a good thing go into the crowd. And he survives this violent crash with only a few bruises. Eddie is able to build a new car through the support of the racing community. But because of his accident, the track replaces its steel guardrails with stronger concrete barriers in hopes of keeping cars from careening into the crowd. A Eurocopter AS-350 comes in for a landing at a small airfield in Grinchen, Switzerland. Landing a helicopter amidst other aircraft is a risky endeavor. With a rotor diameter of 35 feet, it's a tight squeeze for the AS-350. As the pilot touches down, the chopper begins to wobble. The 2,700-pound chopper violently swings counterclockwise, then slams onto its side. As debris flies, two mechanics working nearby freeze in fear. Airport officials sound a siren to summon a rescue crew. walks away from the crash. 
He's taken to the hospital out of precaution and is later released with no injuries. No one else is injured in the accident. Nearby aircraft suffer minor damages. The $2 million Eurocopter is destroyed. An investigation into the cause of this accident is still ongoing. Johnston Island in the North Pacific, 400 miles west of Hawaii. Here, in the early 1960s, the U.S. Department of Defense conducts a series of nuclear test explosions called Operation Fishbowl. These detonations are in response to the Soviets' abandonment of the 1958 nuclear test moratorium. On July 25, 1962, the United States is set to test launch a nuclear warhead they codename Bluegill Prime. The warhead is placed in a kerosene-fueled Thor rocket. The Bluegill Prime bomb has a yield of 1.4 megatons. The plan is to launch it into near space. Ignition, the Thor's engine malfunctions. As soon as the failure occurs, officials must trigger the rocket's self-destruct system while it's still on the launch pad. I'm Ron Pitts. Thank you for watching. Destroyed in seconds. Please. 毁灭瞬间，接着继续播出。